Sports fans might remember the praying tailback, Herb Lusk, who played for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think he was the first uh, that would kneel and pray in the end zone after scoring a touchdown. Herb left professional football after only three very successful seasons, but he left to enter the ministry. He became the pastor of Greater Exodus Baptist Church in downtown Philadelphia, where he and his church really actually led an effort to revitalize the blighted downtown area. They started after-school programs for kids, a computer lab, a bank, among uh, many other projects to aid the community. I not uh, only had the privilege of preaching at Herb's church, I got to work with him on a number of issues, including a Justice Sunday event where we had this huge simulcast at his church, but I also joined him for the very first fundraiser for the only care pregnancy center in the city, which he started. And unfortunately, last night I was informed that he crossed the goal line into eternity, and no doubt I'm sure he knelt once again. Pastor Herb Lux, Lusk was unafraid to stand for truth. He was a tremendous leader and a great friend, and he will be dearly missed. Well, since the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade, the abortion industry has worked overtime to distort the medical definition of abortion. They do this by blurring the lines between the intentional killing of a child in an abortion and the tragic unintended death of a child in a miscarriage or a ectopic, ectopic uh, pregnancy. The reality is that abortion is never medically necessary to save the life of a mother. Such fears are a relic of medical conditions from 50 years ago. Join me now to discuss this and more is Dr. Donna Harrison, a board-certified OBGYN who is presently CEO of the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Dr. Harrison, welcome to Washington Watch. Thanks so much, Tony, for having me on. So, Dr. Harrison, I wanted to, uh, I, I stated in the open, but I, I want to be very clear about this and let you answer the question, because this is something that is being used right now in this debate that, oh, you're going to take away the ability to save the life of a mother if, a, if they can't get an abortion. Um, is it ever medically necessary to do an abortion to save the life of a mother? Well, you know, the pro-abortion, the, the, the simple answer is no. The pro-abortion industry equivocates on the term abortion. Yes, there's about 16 different medical definitions of the word abortion, but most people understand when we use the term abortion, we mean an elective abortion. That is a procedure done for the purpose of producing a dead baby. That is the purpose that you pay the abortionist for. And the reason we can say that is from testimony uh, by abortionists at the uh, partial birth abortion hearings before the Supreme Court. The court asked the abortionists, if you have the baby delivered to the point where the only thing inside the mom is the head, why don't you just complete the delivery? And the answer is because we're paid to produce a dead baby, we're not doing birth. So it's very clear when we use the term abortion in this context, what we mean is a procedure done specifically to produce a dead baby for no medical indication. So when we have to separate a mom and a baby to save the mom's life, we do that. And most of those life-saving situations or life-threatening situations actually happen after the time the baby's able to survive outside. So we do a C-section. We can deliver a baby in 10 minutes if we have to as OBGYNs. We don't have to go in and intentionally destroy that baby's life. And from an ethical, from an from a ethics standpoint, the, the mother is the first patient. And so you are, if you're, if you're seeking to save the life of the mother and something happens with the child, um, that is not an abortion. That is, uh, as you said, that's not the intentional taking of a life. But the abortion industry wants to blur the line to suggest that a mother is just simply helpless because you're not going to do anything to help her because you cannot threaten the life of that baby. And see, that is so ridiculous because 85 to 93 percent of OBGYNs do not do abortion in their private practice. That's been shown by several studies over the last 10 years. We give excellent care. We take care of ectopic pregnancies. We treat miscarriages. We just simply don't go in and intentionally kill a preborn human being. So 
that has that's been going on since Roe versus Wade. Most of us do not do abortions. And to even emphasize that even more, the Catholic healthcare system in this country is responsible for uh, about 20% of the healthcare in this country. They have excellent treatment for ectopic pregnancies and for miscarriages. There's never been an issue of not saving a mother's life. The abortion industry wants to play this on because they don't want to talk about what an abortion really is. And that's a procedure designed specifically to, to end the life of that preborn human being. Uh, one, one final question for you, Dr. Harrison. You, you touched on this, but just to be clear so our, our, our viewers and listeners know this, the, the issue of ectopic pregnancies has been brought up that, oh, well, you can't save the life of a mother because that would be an abortion. Treating an ectopic pregnancy is not an abortion, is it? <laughs> Treating an ectopic pregnancy has nothing to do with an abortion. And even Planned Parenthood admitted that on their website until this whole debate came up and they pulled that, that down from their website. An ectopic pregnancy is where the baby has planted outside the womb and there is no chance that that baby can survive to, to, to be able to survive a separation. So in order to save that mother's life, we do have to separate the mom and the baby, but that's way different than going in to intentionally destroy the life of a preborn human being. If we could save that baby, we would, but at the current state of technology, we can't save babies that are ectopic. Dr. Harrison, I wanna thank you for joining us today. I uh, always appreciate your insight and input in these important discussions. Thank you very much.